Rumors have begun swirling all around the NFL Combine, and Caleb Williams also met with the media today. What's up, guys? Swift here covering everything Chicago Bears. I've heard something behind the scenes now from a couple of reliable sources, and now it's being reported by the national media that the Washington Commanders really want the number one pick. Multiple reports are now confirming this. What does this tell me? It tells me that Ryan Poles is trying to keep his leverage and squeeze everything he can out of a trade. I think he might also be comfortable drafting Caleb Williams, where now he can say, hey, if you don't meet my crazy trade demands, I'm fine taking Caleb. I know how good he is. Poles has all of the leverage here. He has heard all of the hype about Caleb Williams, and he's attended his games firsthand. On top of that, he hasn't shied away from the comparisons to Patrick Mahomes. Ryan Poles is aware that other teams really value Caleb Williams. And for Poles, it comes down to, is he comfortable with Caleb, or would he rather set the franchise up for the next decade? It's never been Caleb versus Justin. I really wish people would stop making it that. The number one pick is the most valuable asset in the NFL. I mentioned this briefly the other day. But if the Chiefs traded Patrick Mahomes with his contract, they could maybe get as many picks as Poles could for this year's number one pick. That's what this is all about. Is any player really worth that many draft picks? Having all of that draft capital would give Ryan Poles the flexibility to move up and take a quarterback even if Justin Fields doesn't work out. Right now, we don't have that extra draft capital. We have one extra first and one extra second next year, but we don't even have our own second this year, and we only have two current homegrown first round picks on the roster. This number one pick could net us potentially six to eight top 50 picks in the NFL draft. That would give Poles enough capital to move up and down the board as he sees fit or find his quarterback in one of the next few drafts or even trade picks for a veteran quarterback. People want to say, well, draft picks are just lottery tickets and you can miss on them. And that part is true, but they're missing a key point there. You don't even have to draft a player with the draft pick. Think about what the Miami Dolphins did. They were the team that traded down with the San Francisco 49ers when they moved up to take Trey Lance. The Dolphins used that trade to acquire three key players in their rebuild. They traded two of their first round picks, and with those they acquired pass rusher Bradley Chubb and wide receiver Tyreek Hill. Then they used the other pick to trade up and take Jalen Waddle. One trade allowed them to have the ammunition to add Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Bradley Chubb, completely transforming the franchise. That's the kind of move I'm talking about here. Imagine the Dolphins' offense without Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. They wouldn't even resemble what they do now. And they didn't have to pick anyone. They used those picks to trade for stud players. Another thing Poles would have the ability to do going forward. Currently, we don't have that kind of ammunition. When the next big star unexpectedly comes up for trade, just like Montez Sweat did last year, Poles would have plenty of ammunition to bring them to Chicago. And that's what it's all about, having extra draft capital and the flexibility to continue making the roster better. So it's all of that versus Caleb Williams. Justin is not even a part of the conversation. So the difference is a lot more nuanced than most people want to admit. Taking Caleb Williams means passing up on a historical haul of draft picks. And that is the real story here. Going even deeper, when it comes to Washington, they have the second pick. What if you can get a historical haul to move down just one pick? What then? I think the same question comes into play again. If the Bears end up at pick number two, and another team is offering you multiple first round picks to move down again, you almost have to do it. Although I do believe Marvin Harrison Jr. is more of a sure thing than Caleb Williams is, let me explain that quickly. Quarterbacks are simply the hardest position to project when it comes to the NFL. Nobody knows if they will be great or not, 
If they did, teams wouldn't draft the wrong guy almost every single year. Trubisky went before Mahomes, Sam Darnold went before Josh Allen, Bryce Young went before C.J. Stroud last year. It's just what happens in the NFL. Projecting how quarterbacks will translate into the NFL is just a guessing game, and it's not an exact science. Meanwhile, Marvin Harrison Jr. is one of the best prospects I've ever seen. In the wide receiver position, while there are misses at every position in the draft, wide receiver is generally much safer than quarterback. And how they transition to the NFL has become much smoother. People will want to bring up names like Troy Williamson and John Ross and other guys who have been busts at first round with wide receivers. The difference is those guys were not projected first round wide receivers. They were guys who were mid round picks who ran super, super fast 40 yard dashes and got over drafted because of their 40 times. That is not what Marvin Harrison Jr. is. He doesn't even have to run a 40 yard dash and he's still a top three pick and to me the best player in this draft. Caleb Williams did meet with the media this morning. He said he had a good meeting with the Chicago Bears, but it was only about 10 minutes long and not much could really be taken from it. They will have a one-on-one -on -one top 30 visit with him later this month. Caleb did compliment our defense and how we won seven games last year. He said the Bears are a good team, and then Caleb laughed off concerns about his size. He said he's the same size as Aaron Rodgers, roughly six foot one or six foot two, and 220 pounds. We will just have to take his word for it until later this month though at USC's Pro Day as Caleb Williams became the first player in NFL history to opt not to weigh in or do medicals at the Combine. He did say he will send his medicals individually to each team he meets with but does not see the need of giving medicals to every team in the NFL draft. Caleb was then asked what he wants to know about the Chicago Bears, and he simply said, do they want to win? I think that's a question we've all asked ourselves over the years. Does the Bears ownership really want to win? It was an interesting interview. I'll link it in the description below. You guys should check that out and let me know what your thoughts are. There were also reports that Marvin Harrison Jr. skipped his interview this morning. I looked into that and he was doing medical exams and getting a body scan per Chris Carter, the former Vikings receiver. There appears to have just been a miscommunication. Today, defensive backs and tight ends will be testing. I have already listened to about 40 interviews from this morning and I'm about to watch five straight hours of combine testing. I appreciate everyone who watches the videos. Please hit the like button for me, and until next time, bear down.